This morning, God has brought us a very strong emphasis that there are exceeding great and precious promises available for us. But for us to really, really enjoy all, all that, that God, God has provided, provided both, both in the time, time and in the time to come, we must overcome the powers of lust. And this is where you have to be sincere with yourself. I wish I had time to talk to you about the rewards of the age to come. We will not be the same in eternity. <laughs> Make no mistakes about it. The works of Jesus bring salvation to us. That means we all qualify to cross over to the realms of light. We are all clothed with the robes of righteousness. But you see, in that world, we will not be the same. After we are admitted into the kingdom of God, God now begins to grade us into rankings and cadres according to our works in grace. And that is where you will discover the true meaning of life. That life is an opportunity for you to invest in the world that is to come. But you can never have an investment there if you have not broken the powers of lust. You will discover that your existence was a waste. The Bible speaks about those who will wear crowns. He said they are the ones who have fought the fight of faith. They are the ones who are able to survive the battles of self-denial. Not allowing their lust to rule over them. In the world to come, he said they shall be crowned. That means in eternity, some will have crowns. Others will not have crowns. And crowns is not about cap. It's about authority, celestial powers. The ability to partake in the government of the age to come. So that you too can rule in the world that is to come. He said, there are those who will sit on thrones. Jesus said, these are they that continued with me in my trials. He said, in the kingdom that is to come, I will appoint unto you thrones so that you will sit with me and judge the 12 tribes of Israel. And Paul made us to understand it's not only for the disciples of Jesus. It's for everyone who endured the trials of this age. But you see, the Christianity we have received is one that has weakened us. Because we think, so long as we have forgiveness, that's all there is to it. Yes, you will be forgiven, but you will never have authority in the world that is to come. This is why this morning, you have to make the decision that for me, I will not fall again. The grace that is available to those who stand, me too, I must receive that grace. Because there is a grace that apportions forgiveness, there is another grace that helps you to stand. That is the grace that we will contend for this morning. I don't know your status and your state in the spirit but you know better but just in case you desire that grace that helps men to stand so that their testimony is the testimony of righteous living not just righteousness then this morning you can make the man can we pray for one minute Lord help me Lord help me Hey, Leon. You are God most high. You are Jesus Christ. El Elyon of Israel. El Elyon. You are God most high. You are Jesus Christ. El Elyon of Israel. Can you make demand of him that sits far above all principalities and powers? Above every name that is named. There is a realm where God sits that gives him the authority to rule over every name. I don't know what the challenge you are going through is. It can be called immorality. It can be called masturbation. It can be called fear. It can be called lust. But there is a name that is above every other name. There is a realm higher than every realm. Make demand. Well, Elyon, you are God most high. You are Jesus Christ. El Elyon of Israel. Nothing will steal your glory. Nothing will take your crown. Nothing will take your throne. But you must contend in this life. You must contend in this life. 
Reverend Hughes mentioned some names. King Saul, God said he was going to rule forever, but he was rejected. He said, Judas will sit on 12 thrones, judging 12 tribes of Israel, but he was rejected. I wonder what eternity will be like for these ones. But you have the opportunity. You won't let immorality take you away from the things that God has planned for you before the foundations of the world. You won't let that lust rob you of the things that God has prepared for you before the foundations of the world. This is your opportunity. This is the glory of life that you can contend for anything and everything in God. servant didn't invite me. I told him I was coming. And if God has asked us to come here, then it's because someone must have a visitation this morning. And when I stood up here, the Lord told me, there are some of you with great mandates and great ordinations. But you are still struggling. You need a fire to come upon your soul. Reverend Hugh spoke about separation. If that separation does not happen, you will never fulfill destiny. And trust me, life can become a big regret if purpose is not achieved. This morning, I want to ask the Lord to allow his fire rest upon some of you. And I just need people who are surrendered, that's all. All you need is just to yield yourself to him and say, from today, this struggle is over. I submit my vessel to you. Use me for your glory. That's all you need to do this morning. Lift your hands one more time. Do we have ushers here? I need to lay hands on some of them. I came to bring you into a realm. I came to bring you into a dimension. I came to bring you into a height of possibilities in the spirit. Because there are men who have been summoned to partake in the rulership dimensions of God so that they can represent his interests on the face of the earth. Some of you this morning will be summoned. This is why we came. Thank you, Holy Spirit. This is the hour of visitation. Mm. This is the hour of visitation. This is the hour of visitation. As much as we cry this morning, let the fires of heaven descend upon them. <laughs> he said, I have heard the cry of my people. I've heard the cry by reason of their taskmasters. Therefore am I come. There are visitations that are occasioned by the cry of the people. Can you call upon the name of the Lord this morning? Desperately, someone is about to step into ordination. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Let's just be quiet now for a moment. I want to manage time, Father. You said your hand will rest upon three of them and you will separate them for a particular assignment. This is the time. This is why you sent me. Now wherever they are standing, I speak as one sent with authority to kindle a generation and to activate eternal ordinations. Wherever they are standing, I bring them under the government of the fire of the presence. Touch!
baptism of fire wherever you are standing I provoke a kindling the flames of the presence There are seven of you here that God is giving the scepter of authority. A scepter of authority. Some of you will rule over demons. Some of you will ascend thrones over systems. Some of you will step into dimensions of influence. And that which you lay your hands to do will become a global phenomenon. Father, wherever they are standing, I stretch my hands in their direction. Carriers of scepters of authority. Rulers over systems, men and thrones to wield power in the name of Jesus. Wherever they are standing now, make contact with that power. In the name of Jesus the Lord, take that grace. Step into that order. Receive that mantle. Ushers, help them, help them quick. I want to lay hands on them fast. They are seven. Holy Ghost. Activations. amplifying your voice he has given you a message for your generation God has put in your spirit a message for your generation and that message is designed to raise sons of glory men that walk in the realms of light and carry the fullness of the father men that manifest the virtues of the kingdom of God and he says he will do it by the instrumentality of the message he has given to you. And so in this season, there is an amplification of your voice. So that the nation will come under your influence. Beginning from this land where he has planted you, you will see that the arrows will begin to shoot forth to Europe, to America. And sons will rise that will walk in the order of the message that God has given to you. A people that knows the truth of the word of God and become that which they hear because your word now we have the power to transform as they hear you they will not just be educated they will be transformed into the likeness of that which you teach and not so long you will see people who will carry dimensions that can only be equated to the glory of the Lord I speak that over this ministry and I decree that it is established by the power of the Holy Ghost and the mighty name of Jesus Christ let the trumpets begin to sound and let your voice begin to travel in the spirit so let it be written so let it be established somebody with a prophetic grace is being activated now 
you are a seer and this, this season the Lord is bringing you into the authority and the dimensions of the prophetic in its fullness wherever you are standing I speak that activation by the spirit by the spirit help him let that river flow out of your spirit now let that river flow out of your spirit witness everyone called into that order everyone called into the order of the prophetic I am waking that dimension now <laughs> 